Welcome to the videos of H2K Infosys. In this particular video session, I'm going to start the Selenium WebDriver, the API used for doing cross-browser testing and for doing functional testing. It's one of the tools present in the Selenium suite. So we'll look at the different features of Selenium WebDriver starting from this particular session. So let's look at uh, the agenda for this particular session. So first, we're going to see the evolution of the selenium suit of tools as a whole now way back in 2006 uh, onwards the selenium 1.0 web was launched and selenium 1.0 web consisted of your uh, selenium ide which is basically nothing but a record and playback tool used with firefox browsers it is actually an add-on of firefox browsers so apart from ide the selenium 1.0 web suit consisted of selenium rc the rc was used to run the scripts made with id or scripts made in selenium rc with different browsers apart from firefox and the third tool present in this particular suit was called as grid the grid is basically used for doing parallel testing over a distributed network during the course of time, because of the drawbacks of RC, uh, the Selenium 2.0 web suit was launched. This was launched in 2010 and it consisted of uh, ID. So that means ID was retained in Selenium 2.0 web suit. And it's basically a recording playback tool as I have mentioned earlier. It works in the add-on of Firefox browser. So whatever scripts you make, and whatever scripts you actually play back gets only recorded and played back in the Firefox browser. It cannot record and play back in any other browsers apart from Firefox. And that is one of the major disadvantages of our ID. But as a whole, since a lot of manual testers uh, were jumping towards automation and it was difficult for manual testers to actually learn the scripting from the very, very core level the id was retained in 2.0 web so that at least the manual tester would have the the advantage of doing a record and playback of the of the scenarios that they want to automate apart from id in 2.0 web suit the selenium web driver api came into force the selenium web driver came into force in selenium 2.0 web suit because of the discovered advantages of the selenium rc in 1.0 web suit uh, the major disadvantages were particularly in the rc server having to start the uh, rc server every time you want to automate your transactions or automate your manual process it also had a disadvantage of maintaining suits it also has the disadvantages of your creating reports. Uh, so all these uh, factors were actually refactored when Selenium RC was replaced by Selenium WebDriver API in Selenium 2.0 web suit. And Selenium WebDriver is also able to play back the scripts made with Selenium RC. So that problematic behavior or that uh, problem or that particular situation raised by teams or companies who had made their scripts in RC was solved because Selenium web driver would be able to run your Selenium RC scripts and plus Selenium web driver is also able to run Selenium ID created scripts that means whatever scripts we had created in ID would be also possible to run in Selenium web driver after doing a conversion of the selenium id scripts into java or perl or php or c sharp etc along with this the selenium 2.0 web also had selenium grid so selenium grid was actually retained in selenium 2.0 web suit and basically it is used for parallel testing over a distributed network during the course of time uh, the selenium there were a lot of releases of the 2.0 version of the selenium and the last version of selenium 2 series was launched uh, sometime back in uh, 
April or May, May if I am not wrong and the last version of 2, 2 series was 2.53.1. In the month of August 2016, the Selenium guys launched the 3 series. It's called the Selenium 3.0 web. In 3.0 web, they have retained ID for record and playback over Firefox browser. And they have also retained Selenium web driver API and retained Selenium crit as a whole. The difference between Selenium 2.0 web and Selenium 3.0 web suit is that in Selenium web driver, they have removed the Selenium 3.0 web series actually, or, or rather the Selenium 3.0 web suit has retained Selenium web driver, but the stuff is that in Selenium web driver present in Selenium 3.0 web suit, it does not support Firefox. That means it does not maintain and support Firefox as it used to do in Selenium 2.0 web or Selenium 1.0 web. For running scripts using Selenium web driver present in Selenium 3.0 web suit, we need to pinpoint to the exe of the Firefox. That means since there is no direct support of Firefox in Selenium 3.0 web suit, now like our Chrome or IE browser, we need to pinpoint the exe of Firefox. That is the first major change. And we look at this particular change uh, later on when we do some practicals. The second thing is that the Selenium 3.0 suit or 3.0 web suit has removed support for RC. So that is the evolution of Selenium as a whole. Let's go to the next slide and look at the agenda for this particular session. So the topics that we are going to cover is first of all, we are going to see the difference between Selenium, RC and WebDriver. We need to understand this very, very clearly. And then we will see why do I use WebDriver instead of using Selenium RC. And the third topic we'll be seeing is as part of practicals is we'll download Selenium jar files, that is the Selenium API and how we configure in, in Eclipse. The fourth topic that we are going to see is the architecture of Selenium web driver. Now in this, I'm not going to show you any kind of diagrammatic behavior, but the architecture means what does Selenium web driver API contain? What are the intrinsic classes which implement the Selenium Web Driver API? And what are the methods present in Selenium Web Driver API? And the classes implementing the Selenium Web Driver API has what kind of methods? It is very, very important that we understand what is Selenium Web Driver API all about. And that's what I mean by architecture of Selenium Web Driver. And lastly, we'll see the drivers for Firefox, IE, and Chrome. The drivers for IE, Firefox, and Chrome are basically used to open up the respective browsers and control the browsers. So that's what these drivers for Firefox, IE, and Chrome will do. So we'll look at the practicalities of that. So let's go and first look at the difference between Selenium, RC, and WebDriver. The first difference is that Selenium RC is a weak API and Selenium, you know, uh, web, web driver is a strong API. So we'll first look at the points related with RC as a whole. Weak API precisely means that when you have a weak API, the number of classes implementing the API is less. And if the number of classes are less, the number of methods present in the class will be less. Similarly, the number of methods present in the API would be also less. This would require us to make more codes or write more codes. And obviously, the complexity of writing codes is not liked by developers. And that is why it will increase the complexity level of using the RC as an API to be used for functional testing. The next point uh, about Selenium RC is can run scripts of ID after conversion. So that's fine. So basically it does what is not ID can run the scripts 
only in Firefox browser because Selenium ID is an add-on of Firefox. So any transaction that we actually record or any scripts that we record can only be played back in Firefox browsers. There is no means that the transactions or the automation scripts made in ID can be run in any other browsers apart from Firefox. And that's a major, major kind of disadvantage as far as ID is concerned. So in order to run this scripts made in ID in other browsers apart from Firefox, we needed to use Selenium RC. So what we need used to do is that we used to convert the Selenium ID scripts into a particular language called Java or PHP or Perl or Python or C Sharp using the import feature present in IDE after conversion to the respective language we would be able to run that particular script or other the converted script in Selenium RC. So that is why the point is given us can run scripts of Selenium ID after conversion. Uh, let us remember what particular thing Selenium ID scripts are made with Selenium commands. So that is why they need to be converted into a Java language, a Perl language, a Python language, or C sharp language to run the scripts in Selenium RC. The full form of RC is remote control. The third point as far as Selenium RC is concerned is that management of excessive test suits is a problem. Selenium RC can manage test suits, yes, but if the number of test suits increase to a considerable level, it is difficult to manage your test suits with RC. And management of test suit means to maintain the dependency of the test suits to maintain the interdependencies of the test cases to maintain grouping of the test suits to maintain grouping of the test cases to maintain the priority of the test suits or to maintain the priority of the test cases or to maintain the para parameterization structure present in the test cases or in the test suits the fourth point is that no support for third-party APIs and software. So Selenium RC as a whole does not support any third-party APIs or software. Like, for example, we want to create Jazzy reports uh, using Ant or Maven. It is not possible for us to, you know, integrate Ant or Maven with Selenium RC. If we want to create uh, beautiful, colorful reports, or if you want to create, uh, let's say, any database related reports, it is not possible to be created because Selenium RC does not support any third party APIs and softwares. The next point says every time we need to use RC, we need to start the RC server. And the major problem with RC server was that it is to misfire. Now, RC server is supposed to be started by using the command prompt or the terminal emulator present in Unix or Linux or Mac. And each time the RC server misfires, it is impossible to use the RC tool for the purpose of functionality testing or for the purpose of creating automation scripts. And most of the time, the RC server used to misfire. And if the RC server misfires, it is impossible to use Selenium RC for the purpose of automations. And that is one of the major loopholes or disadvantage as far as RC is concerned. And because of this reason, the RC was removed. This was one of the major reasons I would say to remove RC and replace it with Selenium WebDriver. Next point, RC server misfired most of the times. So that's what uh, I was speaking about. Uh, most of the time it used to misfire. The next point is using the command line prompt. So it's a pain in the neck to always use the command line prompt for the purpose of starting the RC server or for the purpose of running the created scripts in RC or the converted scripts from ID in different browsers. So let's say I want to run the automation script in Firefox. There's a different RC command for that. 
Similarly, the same script to be run in, let's say, Internet Explorer, I need to use a separate command from that, and the command needs to be fired from the command prompt. And that was a pain in the neck. It's basically a command specific usage. That means if you want to use RC, if you want to run, run the RC scripts, if you want to run the converted IDE scripts, every time we need to fire commands from the command prompt. The report generation feature of RC is very limited. Precisely, it means that it can not create required reports required by technical guys or by managers. So the reports that are generated by RC was very, very, very primitive reports and was not liked by technical guys as well as by the managers. And that was also a major drawback and because of this drawback too, the RC was replaced by Selenium WebDriver in the long run. And these are the points related with the Selenium WebDriver. As far as Selenium WebDriver is concerned, and we compare the API part, the Selenium WebDriver is a stronger API in comparison to your RC. And when you have a stronger API, you will have a lot of methods present in the API. You will have a lot of classes implementing the API. And you will have a lot of methods present in the classes implementing the API. So definitely what is going to happen, the complexity of the code will be less. And when the complexity is less, that precisely means that the number of codes required to write down the automation script will be lesser. Obviously, and that is why Selenium WebDriver is a strong API in comparison to Selenium RC. So the next point speaks about can run scripts of IDE after conversion. So you can also run your Selenium IDE scripts after conversion. That means there's an import feature in Selenium IDE which convert the Selenium commands. That is the script used in Selenium IDE. So it converts the Selenium Selenium commands into a Java code or your Perl or PHP or C-sharp after the conversion you can run the converted scripts in Selenium WebDriver. The third point speaks about the management of test suits. The management of test suits in Selenium WebDriver is a cakewalk. So even if the number of test suits increases to a very 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 considerable level it can still manage your test suits. So management of test suit precisely means that managing the interdependencies of the test suits managing the interdependencies of the test cases, managing the priority of the test cases, managing the dependencies of the test cases, managing the dependencies of the test suits and the priority of the test suits, management of the parameterization concerned with the test cases, and creating proper reports based on the grouping of the test cases that we need to have. As far as Selenium WebDriver is concerned, the fourth point says it supports third-party API and, so, and software. So since there is a sub, there's a support of third-party API and softwares, obviously the kind of reports generated, for example, or the kind of uh, automation that can be performed with Selenium WebDriver is far, far better as compared to your Selenium RC. For example, we would be able to actually automate the windows component by integrating third party apis like securely and auto it with selenium web driver or we would be able to create fantastic reports by integrating selenium web driver with extend reports api which was not possible with rc because rc did not support third party apis and softwares the next point, the fifth point, is a very important point which actually decided the future of RC. In RC, we needed to start the RC server in order to use RC for the purpose of creating automation scripts. There is no concept of starting any server in Selenium WebDriver as a whole. Okay, so there is no misfiring. Obviously, no server means no misfiring. And we do not need to use any command prompt for that. So that is the reason that Selenium WebDriver is advantageous over RC. Why? Because there is no need to start any server as we need to use with RC. And since there is no server, there is no misfiring of servers. 
and since there is no misfiring of server or there is no server as a whole we don't need to use the command line prompt starting our servers in web driver so web driver does not have the concept of starting any kind of server and if we want to run our selenium web driver scripts in any other browsers like your ios or android or let's say safari or opera we don't need to use any command line prompt for it like we used in uh, use, use in rc so if you want to run your our automation scripts in rc in different browsers there is there is a separate rc command to be fired from the command prompt since there is no concept of servers as a whole and there is no concept of command prompt being used there is nothing to be done in order to run your selenium web driver scripts in browsers a single script can run in different browsers and you don't need to use command prompt for that selenium web driver unlike rc is able to generate technical reports and managerial reports which was not possible with rc rc used to generate very primitive reports that was not technically viable 